Hi guys, uh, today we'll be talking about all the possible ways of obtaining a PR if you're onshore. So especially we'll be focusing on onshore students and uh, onshore people who are applied for 485 or they're already on 485 visa. So I've made like uh, three uh, list of how you can get a permanent residency. Obviously the subclass 187 which has a direct entry which is employer sponsorship for direct permanent visa is there or you work for a few few years and then you apply for a permanent visa that option is there but if you want to apply for uh, RSMS subclass 187 direct entry you need to have three years experience and six in each so if you have six in each and you don't have three years experience then you'll have to cancel this uh, option off and uh, if you don't have these three years experience, you can cover that up if you have a sponsor to sponsor you through subclass 482 as well. But please bear in mind that if your occupation is in STSOL, which is not the main uh, me medium and long term list, it's the other list, then you can only get two years of work visa for 482 and then you can extend it onshore for another two years. But you cannot apply for any permanent visa through employee sponsorship. But this is a good way of uh, getting your experience to claim points for either skilled migration or you can uh, find another employer and you can go with direct entry, RSMS direct entry. So for example, if I am a subclass 485 holder and my visa is expiring in eight months and I don't have three years of experience to apply for RSMS direct entry, neither do I have the points for skilled migration as you know that uh, subclass 189, a lot of occupations like accountants require 80 points at the moment. Uh, also IT professionals and engineers, 75 points. So if you don't have those experience, you can apply for 482 and if your employer is there to sponsor you. Cover up those three years and then uh, find another employer, apply for RSMS, subclass 187, direct entry. But if you don't have an employer, then we should also cancel the this option as well and subclass 186 is the same pretty much the same but you require your option uh, your occupation to be in the MLT SSL not in the STSL and so for example if you're a cook restaurant manager you cannot do ENS subclass 186 at the moment because of the rules changes from March 2018 also, you can apply for subclass uh, 482, which is the new 457, work for three years, and then apply for permanent visa through the same employer. Instead of two years, it has changed to three years now. Before, on 457, if you work for two years, you can apply for a permanent visa after two years uh, through temporary residence transition. But uh, now your occupation should be in the MLT SSL, and then you need to work for three years. MLT SSL, three years and six in each to apply for subclass 186 direct entry. <coughs> and so if you don't have an employee in uh, subclass 186 as well, then you should cancel this option as well. So a lot of applicants, uh, especially IT professionals and uh, engineers and accountants who have already applied for 485, and they are on a 485 but have two years of 485 remaining post-study work visa then obviously you can do uh, a job ready program job ready program option is there if you have at least one and a half to two years of 485 remaining so if you want additional information on job ready program you can watch our other videos but this is an option for uh, job ready programmers so a lot of people who come to us uh, say that they have only eight or nine months of 485 remaining and they can't score the required points for accounting uh, and IT profession and engineer occupations. So what can they do? What I, I recommend a lot of applicants is that they can start studying trades courses, uh, commercial cookery, building and construction. And once they have completed the provisional skill assessment, which is they need to collect 360 hours. After that, they can apply for subclass 407. Subclass 407 is uh, just like uh, subclass 457, but it's a training visa 
and just with um, some months of experience you can apply for 407 and you can do job ready program on 407 with the same employer so this visa is valid for one to two years so once you make an application you have uh, a choice of either applying for one year visa or two years visa and you can do the job ready program on 407 so this addresses a lot of people's inquiries that if they have only one year of 485 remaining they are not sure if they can score 75 points if they can get 75 points for uh, IT if they're a software engineer they want to apply for 189 they can do 485 visa they've already applied for 485 visa they can do subclass 407 to cover up the 17 25 hours of job ready program for applying for full skill assessment so this option is there for skilled migration uh, also subclass 189 if you have 75 points for uh, IT professions engineers and 80 points for auditors and accountants then sure you can go ahead with 189 189 option is always there but currently a lot of a lot of these occupations require high points and the feedback we're getting from the immigration department is that they want less and less migrants to stay in Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane and they want them to move to regional areas because Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane is getting too congested so that's why the high points requirement and therefore they're actually motivating or forcing the people to go to regional areas and study or work so subclass 189 if you think you can score 75 plus points then yeah sure you can go with subclass 189 but what I recommend people is that to always have a backup because sure 189 you can apply all over Australia but just in case you should also consider 190 and 489 state sponsorship in regional areas because 189 you can do anywhere but once you are eligible for this you can apply for both of them just to have like a backup option so subclass 190 and 489 in NT <coughs> the study option for 489 is you need to study for two years for to be eligible for 489 or you work in a in your nominated occupation or relevant occupation for six months so two years and six months option Tasmania one year for 489 sorry uh, NT is uh, this option is for 489 Tasmania option is for 489 as well you need to study for one year or you work in uh, nominated occupation or closely related occupation you don't need to be working in your nominated occupation in Tasmania in Canberra if you're going interstate then you study there for one year but this option is only for 190 so 190 489 489 one year study in Canberra or six months of relevant work experience we get a lot of inquiries that um, also that the similar to job ready program if you don't want to do job ready program and you want you have found an employer in uh, these regional areas and your visa is uh, limited visa you have like two or three months of visa you have on 485 then you can also apply for subclass 407 if you have an employer in regional areas work for six months or three months in these regional areas and then you can be also eligible for 489 or 190 so you don't have to be studying there you can study there obviously but 407 is a good option to be eligible for 489 190 in uh, Northern Territory Tasmania and uh, Canberra <coughs> so if you don't want to do job ready program and your visa is limited like three or four months or less than a year and you need to be eligible for work options in NT Tasmania ACT then surely if you have an employee you can apply for subclass 407 with subclass 407 as previously previously mentioned if you have few months of experience in the same occupation or relevant uh, re relevant occupation then you can apply for 407 as as for example if I'm a chef and I want to apply for 407 I have few months of experience in Australia I can apply with 
the current employer and go to these regional areas and be eligible for state sponsorship as well. Same goes with IT professions, engineers, accountants. So these three options are available to you. Uh, there are other options as well like protection visas and you can apply for business, uh, business innovation visas as well. But not a lot of people, especially from uh, India and Bangladesh, Nepal, apply for these visas, especially international students. So these options are available to you. You should take into consideration subclass 407. The approvals are taking three to four months. They're very quick approvals at the moment. If you have any questions relating to uh, skill migration 489 or 190, or if you have an employer who wants to sponsor you, uh, feel free to uh, contact us on the information provided to you on the screen. If you are in Australia, you can contact us on this number. And thank you.